Hey, Jim, how are you? Two. So welcome everybody. Uh, it's a Monday, January 24th, last pod meeting of the year. I mean, of the month, <laughs> first of the year at this uh, time. And I'm surprised that uh, we have a small group today, but I, uh, I didn't bug people with a, with a reminder email and I'm beginning to regret it <clears throat> that I didn't let people know about this. I did send something out on the, before the weekend, but I didn't do it uh, just before the meeting. I was busy with something else. So, mm. I'm sad about that, but <clears throat> anyway, we're going to have a great time. Whoever, I like the idea of uh, open space and one of the principles of open space is whoever is here is the right people. I'm really glad about that. <clears throat> and uh, small groups provide more intimacy and fun. So I think we'll, we'll be having a great time. And I will record uh, the meeting and um, I, record all, I record all three each month and then I choose the one that seems to be um, the clearest or most fun or whatever, and then post it on the website <clears throat> eventually. So that's the plan. And today is about, um, uh, I think I called it uh, aiming for uh, certification. And so we're going to explore this concept of aims. And uh, but to start with a self-connection exercise, I'm going to share my screen with you. Get us going here. So, um, we're going to start with a self-connection exercise that is um, called the word of the year. And it was uh, stimulated by an article I read in the New York Times uh, that referred to this woman here, uh, Kelly McGonigal. Kelly is a um, psychologist and a teacher at Stanford University in California. And she works a lot with um, how to create well-being and so forth. So uh, she had this idea a few years ago um, that rather than have a New Year's resolution, which none of us are particularly good at keeping, um, that she thought maybe it would be more helpful to have just a single word that would support us in aligning our activities with uh, our aims and our goals for the year. But not so much at the, like, you wouldn't want to have a word of the year like diet you'd want to have a word of the year like vitality. So we're going to do a little process here to support you in coming up with the word of the year. We'll start uh, if you want to play the game, which of course everything I do is optional. Uh, we'll start with five minutes of journaling uh, to kind of get your brain ready for this. And these would be the two questions that you could consider with some journaling. What do I want to contribute? And what matters most to me? So just do some free form journal writing, answering those two questions. And I'll let you know when we're about four minutes and 30 seconds into it.
about 30 more seconds. Anybody like any more time to finish writing or are you at a complete enough stage? Okay, so then the next step is to um, now see if review what you wrote and consider consider empathizing with you wrote and the idea would be to um, kind of winnow it down to one single word that encapsulates the underlying energy of those two questions. So for example, the word that I chose uh, would be um, savoring. Savoring kind of encapsulated it for me. Um, gratitude is a really important part of my proce process and practice and savoring's like the, the most important part of the gratitude process. And so that's really been helpful for me for the last uh, 24 days. And uh, Jory's, by the way, uh, she chose the word zero, referring to the zero step to kind of remind her to focus on intention and attention. So take another three minutes and consider how to encapsulate what you wrote into a single word. Jim, may I have the second question again? Yes, it was um, uh, what matters most to me? What matters most to me? About uh, 30 more seconds.
Anybody want more time? Looks, maybe we'll go another 30 seconds. Looks like people are still writing. Go 30 more seconds. Okay, so let's do a round. This will be like our check-in. And the invitation would be to do what I did to say um, what, what word you chose and why. Anything else you need to say just to kind of arrive if there's something else important to you to say. And um, so why don't we start with Jen? If you're ready, Jen. Yeah, just what my word is. Yeah, what your word is and why you chose it. How you think All it right. might support you. So, um, haha, this is pretty intimate and that's okay. Um, spaciousness and in my writing, I realized, so yeah, what do I want to contribute and what matters most to me is, um, yeah, that I love helping, yeah, others have space to be heard and seen, like kind of the opposite of feeling like a burden and instead, and I'm like, well, what do I want? If I don't want them to feel like a burden, what do I want them, uh, how us to see them and, and them to feel? I said, rich, complex, full of gifts, treasures, what actually matters. They deserve love, care, vitality, and well being, understanding, and patience. And yeah, I chose the word spaciousness. It's kind of like space for everyone. -ness. Yeah, spaciousness. I love it. Yeah. Well, let's take that in and create some space for it. Uh, and Celia, would you like to go next? Thanks, Jim. Um, <clears throat> so my word turned out to be acceptance. And as I was writing, you know, these other words were coming up like stability and um, forgiveness and simplicity and compassion. And, and it, and it kind of, you know, titrated down into this one word of acceptance where it leaves nothing out. So it's, and right now I'm having, um, having some mourning. My um, root teacher, Thich Nhat Hanh, passed away. And I'm riding those waves of, you know, sadness and joy. And, and it just is really echoing with a lot of loss that I've um, experienced. And I think globally we're, we're still experiencing and um and when i have that acceptance it allows me to hold those feelings you know with that compassion but it it means i'm not running from them and i can just oh yeah like it's tough right now yeah i'm sad so so it's really stepping into the solidity stepping into the compassion and that's i see that as the the space that I need to, to be able to hold those things. Thank you. Oh, acceptance. Yeah. Maybe we just take 30 seconds to hold that acceptance space for Ty.
savoring, spaciousness, acceptance. And um, Elena? Oh, I'm feeling so tender just hearing um, what's already been shared. It's, it's definitely shifting me. Mm. Yeah, I was really circling around uh, authenticity and partnership and thriving and healing and wholeheartedness, kindness, love. And that landed me on presence of being... Uh, the quality of presence that I want to have where I'm, I'm really with my own experience in, in each moment. Um, yeah, and whatever, whatever that is, if it's healing or appreciating or mourning, celebrating, yeah, presence. Presence. Mm. really enjoying this theme that seems to be developing from our shared words here. Yeah. And um, Gonzalo, help, am I pronouncing your name right? I probably need a little Portuguese lesson here. Almost. The, that strange C, it's like an S. Gonzalo. So it's, exactly. Yeah. Right. Uh, so, after I read the questions, uh, no words were really coming up for me, but something else came up for me, which was actually a song that I uh, wrote uh, during um, a virtual intensive training that took place in October in Spanish during one of the sessions and it, yeah, I, I even listened to it on YouTube again. Um, Cause it really answered the question, but then I was like, okay, let's see if there are words that come with that. And it really, the, the word that really symbolized that feeling I was getting is uh, compassion, compassion. Yeah, at first I wrote self-compassion, but no, it was compassion in general towards me and others. And why does it inspire me or why is it important for me? I'm actually not sure. I know that it's the type of energy or feeling or thing or process or that inspires me the most to create music um yeah i'm a musician i'm i'm a pianist so it just really inspired and, and i'm it's really what i want to communicate through my music it's like the most important thing for me mm. i'm not sure why but it is i know it is it's very deep like i i um so I'm not sure I can answer why, but yeah. Oh, sweet. I'd love to, maybe you can put a link for the song for us. I can, I can, yeah. Be sweet. Yes. Hi, Joe, we're just I'll finishing check our check-in with uh, Susanna, and then we'll, we'll bring you up to date with where we are. Go ahead, Susanna. Yeah, I'm choosing the word warmth and uh, it encompasses lots of needs. Uh, it's a very, very snowy day where I live and I changed positions to be very warm, like a blanket, but there's something about the metaphor of that, how I want to experience people, what, what kind of container I want to contribute to. And uh, there's many things that I wanna contribute to in life but what matters most is to bring this create foster this atmosphere of warmth and it um when i'm in that place with myself or others 
it just feels like my whole being is open to whatever life has for me. So I think that's, that's what I want to share. Warmth. Yeah, so Joe, uh, welcome. We've been playing around with the word of the year, uh, which would be uh, kind of a replacement strategy for New Year's resolutions. But a single word that kind of encapsulates um, an energy that you're hoping to embody in the coming year. A word that can be like an anchor. So if you find yourself getting triggered or um, something like that, that you could um, say this word to yourself or even say it out loud. Or maybe it's just a moment of mindfulness that you want to um, increase the enjoyment of it. And so let me see, let me ch test my memory here and see how I did, if I can remember everybody's words and then give you a moment to connect with a word that's alive for you. And so let's see here, we have um, Celia came up with acceptance and um, uh, Gonzalo came up with compassion and Jen came up with spaciousness and uh, Susanna came up with warmth and Celia was acceptance and my word was savoring. Jory's word uh, is zero. So if you have a word that you just want to pop in with. Lena's word is oh, present. Lena, yeah, Lena's word was presence. Thank you. Five out of six, not bad. Um, so Joe. Well, um, I haven't given this much thought, but uh, I'm going to go with non-dual. Non-dual. And why would you choose that word? That's the second part. Uh, well, you know, I was inspired by a recording by Thich Nhat Hanh this morning, and he was talking about uh, just various things that can create suffering, and, and he, he linked it to uh, a belief in separateness. And uh, it seemed, as I listened to it, it seemed kind of true. And uh, I think when I, when I feel like I'm part and connected to everything around, I believe I do have less suffering and, and uh, more patience and so forth. So that's my word of, if not the year, the minute. So the word of the moment. Yeah. Non-dual. Great. Thank you. So um, here is a link to the whole article from the New York Times that inspired this practice. Can uh, digest it later. And is there anybody who wants to say anything else before we move into the next uh, step of our process today? I'll just add quickly to what I said before. Because actually, um, just wanted to say quickly something about what I was saying. Compassion, kind of of communicates what I, what I want to express, but I, I've called it deep love before. And it's like a type of, it's a specific type of love which holds, it's like really cares for suffering, for pain, but it's, um, which is compassion, but I, I don't know. It, it's that kind of love, the love that really holds all that suffering all that all that pain and you know and and is not diminished by suffering it's like infinitely expansive nice yeah still so, yeah, it reminds me uh, here listening to you it reminds me of the key distinction um uh, be about love um and um uh love as an action that seemed to encapsulate compassion for me that when we act from our love, it's a, it's compassion. Yeah, it's not so passive. Might start with just passive presence and then 
there's a movement somehow. Is that fit for you? I see you nodding your head. Yeah. Yeah, sweet. Anybody else? No, I just want to say um, I'm feeling so much warmth and Gonzalo, when I clicked on the link you shared, I, I didn't realize it was your song. So, oh, I'm so excited to see that and looking forward to savoring it later. I just really moved. I, I didn't realize it was, yeah, a gift of your music. Oh. Thank you. Anybody else? I just want to say that I might be camera off moving around a bit as I get ready for the dentist, but hearing and listening and appreciating all of you. Yeah. Thanks, Jen. So, um, anybody else? All right. So the, the substance today is about this notion of aims, but in order to get to that, we need to back up a little bit and uh, talk about, um, two other concepts. So these aren't, by the way, these aren't necessarily NVC concepts, uh, although for me, they're very much related to NVC um, because I learned these concepts when I was a relatively young trainer. Uh, Jory became the executive director on an interim basis, Jory being my wife, for those of you who don't know. Um, and um, uh, as a result of that higher level of involvement with the structural uh, parts of, of CNBC, uh, I, uh, I took a class in sociocracy and it was with John Buck. And it was, the idea was to, uh, I, Jory and I took on the project after she finished her directorship uh, to um, build global community for CNBC. And so we were going to try to use a sociocratic structure to build this community. So I got to take a sociocratic facilitation training with John Buck. And so the concept of vision is um, the first place that we began. And vision means uh, like uh, the biggest dream you can possibly imagine for the world that you would like to live in. So it may even be beyond your own lifetime. And um, part of when I take on a candidate, before I take on a candidate, I invite them to work on their vision and then to continually refine it over the course of their um, certification process. And so if you already have a vision uh, statement written, then um, write it down for yourself and savor it for a few minutes. If you don't, then you can just uh, take three minutes and start just dreaming. We call it dreaming and giraffe just dream a little bit about what that big vision might look like as a first step in getting clearer on what, what that world might look like. So I'll be quiet again for three minutes while you either uh, savor and um, review your own vision or just start working on a new one.
Uh, it's from Portugal. She's a bit late, but. Hi. Hello. Hi, Christina. Hi. Hi, Jim. Welcome. Glad you're here. Hi, everybody. Thank you very much. Yeah, we're just uh, reviewing and thinking about uh, our own vision, our personal vision for the world that we would like to like to help create a vision of the world we'd like to live in. So let's take another 30 seconds or so. Okay. Then the, the second kind of preliminary concept to consider before moving into aims is mission. Mission uh, means the specific part that I want to play during my lifetime in order to um, move the world in the direction that I'd like it to see. So just for example, um, my, my vision is something like a, a world where everybody's needs can be reliably and abundantly met. And so one, one idea about vision statements is they're short and brief, kind of like the word of the year process that we did a few minutes ago. So they're just as you try to find a way to encapsulate your vision, almost like a slogan or a mantra, a bumper sticker, so that, that it can be, um, easily accessible as you consider um, um, other questions that are important to you. So again, for me, it's something like um, uh, a world where everybody's needs are reliably and abundantly met. And then the mission question is, what part do I want to play in fulfilling that vision? And for me, I made a decision about 20 years ago that uh, being a CNBC certified trainer was my mission that I wanted to um, to spend my the rest of my life um, supporting Marshall and the Center for Nonviolent Communication and their mission, and um, so that's pretty easy uh, for me, nice and brief. I just keep that as my focus. Other parts of my life I had different missions like there was a time when I was a, a young parent and my mission was just to like survive and help my children to survive and to thrive. So I'll take another three minutes or so and see if you can write down a mission statement for yourself or clarify what your mission is. What part do you want to play in bringing your vision to, fr to, to fruition?
about 30 more seconds. So the way I use this when I'm working with candidates that I get to work with is, as I mentioned, I invite candidates before they register to get clear on their vision and have their vision statement. Then before uh, pre-assessment, I'd like to have candidates be really clear on their mission. And the reason that I do that is to guide them in clarity that their mission's in alignment with the mission of CNVC. Because that's what it means to be a certified trainer. For One of the things it means to me to be a certified trainer is my mission's in alignment with CNVC's mission. And so before we go any further into the pre-assessment, they get it earlier, that's even even better. But before pre-assessment and that extra, um, the kind of those extra steps and time and so forth, just make sure that there's clarity on mission statement. So all this is preliminary to get clear on aims. And, but before we do that, I have another game to play. And so I'm gonna, um, we're, we're gonna have a little pop quiz, so to speak, uh, in terms of your certification uh, journey. And I'm gonna make uh, two breakout rooms. Um, and Susanna, I'd like it if, if I like to know whether you want to be in a breakout room or hang out with me, and uh, we can do some debriefing and chatting. What would be your preference? Yeah, I'd, I'd enjoy connecting with you if that works for everybody. Okay, so let me just uh, make two rooms, and I know. Um, I put you in the big room, uh, so there's two rooms of three. Um, one has a room of four, one room, I'm sorry, one room of four and one room of three. And that's because I know Jen might have to leave um, before we finish this part. So here's your task in uh, with your small group, is um, imagine that you, you and your teammates are gonna be doing a training um, or a portion of a training um, soon, maybe within the next few days. And um, your task is to come up with five bullet points that express how to make a request in NBC. Five bullet points about how to make a request in NBC. So um, you want your bullet points to be you know, uh, as clear as possible, as brief as possible, so they could go on a on a handout or a flip chart, and then you could you could um, talk more about what's underneath them. But see if you can get it down to just five statements or ideas or concepts that are important to you about um, requests, requests in nonviolent communication, and we'll do this for fifteen minutes. The timer will say 13, but there'll be an additional two minutes at the end to finish up. And then when we come back, we'll go through, um, we'll share with it with each other, where the two groups will have a chance to share what we came up with, and then we'll take the next step from there. All right, anybody have any questions before we do that? Great, I guess I was clear. See you all in 15 minutes. And let's see here. Let me make sure that, yeah. Okay, so Susanna, you just stay here with me. Okay. Don't go, here we go. Okay, welcome back. Now we get to harvest. And um, if this group is like the other two groups, we'll end up with more than five and then we'll 
we'll figure out what to do about that. So let me just share my screen while I write. So that the way that um, that we played the game in the other group was uh, one group would report one one thing, um, and the other would report um, the next one, and we go back and forth, back and forth, until we got them all done. So um, let's start with um, uh, Gonzalo's group and give me one of your bullet points, and I'll write it on this. Um, so one was clear and concise. Clear and concise. Okay. And the other group? That would be either um, Christina or Joe. Uh, detached from all from all time. I don't know if uh, did, did you hear me. I I can't I can't hear you well. It's a little bit muddy. Okay. Yeah. Can Can you say it again? Okay. Uh, detachment from outcome. Oh, uh, I think you said detachment. So like open to outcome. Is, uh, is, exactly. is, is that right? Did I get that? Yes, that's it. Great. And the other group? Back to uh, Celia or Lena or Gonzalo. Yeah, we had um, like uh, doable or actionable. Actionable. Okay. And uh, Joe or Christina again? We had zero step. Zero step. That's one. <laughs> okay. One bullet. Yeah. And um, back to Lena, Gonzalo, or Celia again. Oh, present tense. Okay. Present. Oops. Okay. And Joe and Christina again. Is there anything left? Yeah, we had getting clear on our own needs and those affected. Okay. The needs of the others who are affected. So could we call that um, um, uh, needs consciousness? Consciousness or something like that? Okay. Sure. Oops. Okay. Anything else from? Um, Celia, Gonzalo, or Lena? So we had um, the three types of requests, and then we just got into what those actually were. We had a little um, discrepancy over okay. what we were understanding the three types of requests. Okay. All right, anything else from the other group? I don't think so. Christina, do you remember anything? No, oh, I don't remember anything else. Okay. And anything else from uh, Gonzalo, Lena, or Celia? That's it. That's it. Okay. We, well, we had we, we did have, we had the difference yeah. between request and demand. Okay. Um, clarify the difference between request and demand. Request the demand. Okay. All right. So um, let me see what questions come up for me now. Because um, I, I, I already have in mind what the five should be. So now I got to try to <laughs> clarify it and, um, and uh, see what I don't understand yet. So uh, what do you mean by uh, actionable? And how is it? Yeah. What do you first? What do you mean by actionable? Oh, something that can be done, mm -hmm. like, um, like do the doable. dishes. Like doable. Yeah. Doable. yeah. And uh, how is that different than being clear and concise and present? Is there anything that is part of being doable that's not clear and concise and present. 
or does clear I, go ahead I'll, no, I was just saying, actually, I think I mentioned that uh, I like to to differentiate between specific and doable because I can be very like I want you to fly to the moon right now. Mm -hmm. uh, it's quite, and I can be specific about a part of the moon I want you to fly to, but it's not uh, very easy to do. Uh -huh. Yeah, good point. Good point. Okay, um, and then uh, let's see here. I'm gonna uh, propose that for the purposes of making a request that zero step and needs consciousness are kind of the same thing. That um, especially uh, if, it's a, if it's a group that has, has been, uh, maybe doesn't know this, this Jim and Jory concept of the zero step. Uh, that may be, may be calling it needs consciousness, uh, which goes towards uh, presence and um, um, intention. Um, so I wonder if there's any, any, because we need to get it down to five, any objections to just deleting zero step for this? So we can see if we can get it down to five. Okay. Not hearing any objection, I'm going to say yes. In, in my um, understanding of zero step, it also overlaps with open to outcome. Yes, exactly. Thank you. It also overlaps with over. Uh, okay, and then uh, for me, I would say that the same for request versus demand. That has to do with being open to outcome. That if I if mm -hmm. I I actually had a direct experience of this, uh, and it's a little embarrassing to admit, um, but uh, we were at um, a warehouse. Um, kind of grocery store called Costco, you know, and uh, somebody's mask had slipped uh, and, and Costco's very strict about having masks and their mask had slipped down below their nose. And I, I said to the guy uh, and I did it really warm and friendly and and um, uh, I was very present and, and I said, hey, man, I, I think your mask has slipped and he went to move his mask up. He realized that he was about about to do something that he probably really didn't want to do and he and he went yeah like that and the next thing out of my mouth was me under my breath cursing him which let me know that i wasn't making a request i wasn't really open to outcome in that moment and so uh, anybody object to me taking requests versus demand out and um, calling that uh, open to outcome okay so now we're down to six and I would say that this would be a different, um, a different part of the training. That once we get clear on what are the elements of a request are, then we might talk about types of request. So it might be two different chunks. Anybody object to me taking that out? Okay, cool. So now let's compare it with what I came up with. And so um, I'm trying to think of what, what's, how, how we did that. It feels like a math problem here. Let's go back to this one. Uh, we've got clear and concise. Here we have uh, concrete and specific. That's kind of the same thing. Here we have open to outcome. That's what we have in the other one, open to outcome. Here we have actionable or doable. That's the new piece, which I like. I, I like the, your distinction. Uh, I put doable here that it's stated in the positive, but I, I see your point, Gonzalo, that um, you know you can ask somebody uh, and make a very clear request that is um, not really doable, even though it might do all these other things. And it's present and present. And going back to yours, Jim, I, I like the stated in the positive, uh -huh. which wasn't on our list. I think right. that can be very helpful. Yeah, I think that's clear because it, for me, when I'm teaching requests, it, um, it makes the distinction, uh, which isn't one of the official key distinctions, but it makes the distinction between a wish and a, a request. And going to the moon, 
flying to the moon is a wish because we don't have the technology for doing that. So I think that's why I probably have it that had it that way. And we also make requests often stated in the negative. You know, I want you to stop, you know, bugging me. <laughs> right. And they don't, those usually don't work out so well because <laughs> again, they're more like a wish. What do you mean? Don't bug me, but I'm not bugging you. I'm just trying to get my needs met here. Great. Okay. So I think we're close enough. Uh, anybody have anything to say about, about where we're at with this? Okay, so the whole point of all this was one, I thought it would be fun to get, uh, by the way, I, I did this with a much larger group the first time and I think we had uh, 12 or maybe even 14 different things uh, to, to winnow down to five. So I think that's a really great process for a trainer to, uh, to do the winnowing and try to get, um, to get the briefest um, thing possible because people won't be able to um, hold on to too much data. So now we're going to make a distinction, again, not one of the official uh, uh, key distinctions, between a request and an aim. So I'm going to go back to, um, I need to look at this other crib sheet. So um, three things that are common between requests and aims, aims as they're talked about in socio my understanding of sociocracy, uh, they're they're stated they're both stated in the positive. They're both concrete and specific. They're both connected to needs. So those are those are in common, but then we start getting a little bit of variation between requests and aims, um, and it starts actually with connected to to needs um, because. The, when, when I'm thinking about the aim that I might have about something like um, doing these pod meetings once a month is an example of an aim. So I have a, an aim to ha have a pod meeting. So that is stated in the positive. I actually know exactly when and where it is and what the Zoom thing is and the, kind of the steps that I have in order to make that happen each month. And it is connected to needs, but it's the needs about my vision not necessarily the needs that are current for me in the moment. Although I guess in, in one way, the vision is always current in me in the moment, but it's really, um, uh, it, and it goes to this, the, the orientation. I use the word orientation to describe the slight difference. Um, so with a request, it's just about, I'm gonna make the request uh, in the present moment. And uh, the, the um, compliance, so to speak, uh, the uh, saying yes to the request will happen in the moment, not at some future date. So if I say, would you like to have lunch um, next week? Um, and they say yes, that for me would be more like an aim than a request. But if I said, uh, would you tell me right now how you feel about having lunch next week? That would be a request because it can be, um, it's, it's doable right now. Whereas with an aim, the orientation is from now on. Starts in this moment, but it includes the future as well. So that's one distinction for me. The second one that's very similar, but not exactly the same, is in uh, requests, uh, we have this idea of openness to outcome, which is in, in, what, in, in classical giraffe, uh, you, you kind of hold that energy by saying, would you be willing to? And that kind of encapsulates that feeling of, if you say yes, if you say no, I can live with it. I can be, I can, it's not gonna affect my, my connection with you. <clears throat> with an aim, I use the word ecology. Let me say what I mean by that. Ecology refers to really having a systemic view. So I'm including uh, myself in a much bigger picture um, because I want to consider not only the system, the life-serving system that I'm hopefully building inside myself, but my primary relationship with Jory and how my aims might affect her I want to include other family members if I'm living with them. 
and I might even want to include other people in my um, in my colleagues, and I want to, might want to include other people in even my neighborhood. So I, I, I try to create a much a, as large of a systemic view as possible when I craft my aims. And the concept that helps me to frame that is this idea of empathy for the future. So I imagine myself and other people that I'm involved with, that if I, if I start working on this aim, how's it going to affect them? And then how's that gonna affect us? So that's what I mean by ecology. Anybody have any questions about, about that concept? Okay, then now we go into some things that are um, maybe even more of a contrast. <clears throat> With a request, my focus is just on connection. That's my intention when I'm making the request. And um, that's, what's that's actually what's driving me to make the request is what can I do to make life more wonderful? What can I do to enhance our connection, to increase our connection? And with, with an aim, my focus is on mission. How does this aim of maybe facilitating three pod meetings a month, how does that support my mission? So uh, I refer uh, my aims to my mission to make sure they fit. So if I suddenly get really excited about opening up a food truck and uh, I want to start, uh, be, you know, making food for people, I'd, I'd have to think about how is that going to focus on my mission and my vision? And it might help me clarify that maybe that's not a, an aim that I want to spend my time on with, or it might remind me or encourage me to take a look at my mission. Maybe this mission isn't what I want to do anymore. And so um, <clears throat> when I'm making a request, I'm gauging my level of connection with empathy. Empathy and self-empathy, and is this is this actually leading me more towards connection, or are we getting disconnected? And is there something that I can do about that? Whereas the evidence with an aim is I, I actually see progress. I actually have observations that say, okay, <clears throat> my aim was to do three pod meetings this month, and I've done two of them, and I'm in another thirty-five minutes. I'll finish the third one so I can check it off. <clears throat> so there's concrete evidence for the completion of an aim. <clears throat> Any questions or about that or comments? Yes. Uh, regarding the last thing you said, um, the evidence for, for the pro for progress uh, towards the aim. Uh, so you, you evaluate the progress, your progress towards your, no. So there's concrete, you, you said it has to be concrete. There's concrete evidence like, oh, I did these spots. Um, okay, and that's it, okay. Uh, yeah. I'll understand the distinction yeah. later. Yeah, I think you got it. I mean, with a request, you have immediate feedback because the person either says yes or no to your request. And okay. then you just kind of keep building the connection with an aim, you know, to fulfill an aim, it might take um, days, weeks, months, years. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> Jim, I've, I've got a question too. I, I, I'm not sure I'm tracking. These are new concepts for me, the aim. And it sounds like aims are um, kind of more intermediate possibly long-term goals toward one's vision? Yes, exactly. Okay, thank you. Yeah, <clears throat> and um, so, um, and I think that'll get clear. There's like three more, th four more little chunks here that are a little bit, that kind of create clarity about the distinction between requests and aims. So with a request, my orientation is we. It's interpersonal. Requests are always, always interpersonal. And so I know some people, including me, teach that we can make requests of ourselves. But when I'm thinking with, th with this framework, um, aim, requests of myself are aims. They're not really requests because they're like, they're from now on. 
and they're they're more personal, intrapersonal. So requests are by you, with this with this uh, model, uh, requests are always about we. Aims are always about me. <clears throat> it's what I want to do to fulfill my mission, to bring my vision. Of course, I have that systemic piece earlier, so I'm including you in me. I have that kind of non-dual relationship going as well. But the orientation is I. We for requests, I for aims. <clears throat> Then with a request, if I'm really living in that needs consciousness, that request is coming from empathy. I sense what's alive in the system that we're building together, intra, interpersonally. And um, so I, I'm empathizing with, with your request. So if, like, like as I'm doing this, this class right now, I'm looking at the screen and and uh, I'm, I'm looking for signs and signals of clarity and resonance. Maybe you're nodding your head, or maybe you're looking kind of like what you know. And so I'm 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 if I if I get somebody looking like this, then I might empathize with a request for clarity. And so then I might say, Would you like me to say that in a different way? That would be my request. So it's it's about me being being alive and sensing uh, what's alive in you, and while staying connected to to my needs. Whereas with an aim, <clears throat> I'm empathizing with a wish that I would like to fulfill. So another word for aim is a wish. This is how we can turn wishes into life serving um, structures for ourselves, um, and the wish or the aim is always gonna be related to my mission. And my mission is always gonna be related to my uh, vision. So I'm more or less constant, when I'm thinking in terms of aims, I'm, I'm measuring my aims against, um, against my mission. <clears throat> Two more. Uh, and this is this is the one that the, in the last two meetings has been kind of stimulating and fun to talk about. When I make a request, I'm making an offering from me to you. So my my requests are about something I sense will contribute to your needs. In other words, it's a gift might contribute to my needs too, I hope so. That would, that would really make it um, <clears throat> holistic and systemic. But it's really given from that energy of a gift. Even if I say to you, uh, to, to, let's say to Jory, <clears throat> if I say, um, would you be willing to scratch my back? That's still a gift to her because at least at two levels, one, she's free to say yes or no, so it's uh, acknowledgement of her freedom, her autonomy, since I'm open to outcome. And two, it's an opportunity for her to contribute. I'm giving her the gift of contributing to me. This, I think, is something that we miss in NBC, that it's the way that we get um, Marshall has um, the progress of NBC chunked into three three phases. One is he calls emotional slavery, where we're not really connected to, to needs at all. Uh, the second is obnoxious giraffe, where I have needs, but I'm not so so clear about that you have needs yet. I just want to make sure that I get my needs met. And then the third phase is emotional liberation. Well, if I'm living from the from the energy that my requests are an offering. Um, from me to you, that's emotional liberation. If I think that a request is for you to give me what I want, that's obnoxious giraffe. And with an aim, the, the offering is to me. I'm doing my aim for me. So I'm not doing these pod meetings for you. I'm doing these pod meetings for me. Hey, Roger, glad to see you. We're just finish, you know, getting close to finishing up a little piece about uh, the difference between requests and aims. Glad to see you. <clears throat> so uh, an aim is an offering to myself. 
Any questions or comments about that? Okay. <clears throat> Finally. And then, oh, sorry, Jim. Go ahead. So, an offering to myself of my aim is as is an offering to myself in the way that I'm um, making a conscious contribution um, to the world, as so that I have meaning and purpose exactly. as a gift to myself. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, since since the orientation is we, I mean me, and since the I but I, but I have this ec ecological view. I'm not willing to do my aims at your expense, uh, but it's still an offering to me. I'm doing this. So this, the reason I think this is important is because it helps me from slipping into resentment. I, it keeps me from saying, I'm, I, oh, woe is me. I have to do another pod meeting, right? If, 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 I, if that's the energy, no one's gonna enjoy it. And I might wanna let go of that aim. You know, this isn't serving my mission anymore if it's not serving my needs. I want to find another, I want to, so the, and the way Marshall would put this would be, don't do it if it isn't play. That's what I mean by an offering to yourself. It's playful, it's fun, it's making your life more wonderful. Anything else about that one? Okay, <clears throat> then finally, a request is always one next step. They're little teeny tiny micro movements uh, to build connection. So would you be willing to tell me what you heard me say? Would you be willing to tell me how you feel after you hear me say that? Those are the three kinds of requests, you know, or would you be willing to pass me the salt? <laughs> an action step. But they're always one little step, whereas an aim might be multiple next steps. So for me to do three pod meetings a month, there's a there's a kind of a little flow of about seven steps that I take each month in order to do these pod meetings. So there's multiple next steps with an aim. And of course, with even more complex aims, uh, you know, like maybe maybe you have an aim like Susanna uh, <clears throat> it, uh, supports the the Compassionate Communication Center of Ohio or whatever you call it. Can't quite remember the name of it, but I'm sure your aims are quite complex. You know, you probably have a five-year plan, or you know, you have uh, you know quarterly reports and all these kinds of details when you have a, a big a big project like uh, CNBC or or CCCO. <clears throat> so those are the distinctions <clears throat> between requests and aims, and why they're important to me is to create some clarity. I want to, I, I just love that, the, that when there's the most amount of clarity is when it helps me to make life more wonderful for myself and other people. And so I love thinking in terms of distinctions. <clears throat> then for journaling about this later, let me put it into the chat. Then I'll, I'll get to give you this whole handout that I made. <clears throat> You might consider answering these questions in a journal <clears throat> for your assessor or for yourself. <clears throat> what motivates you to make a request? And what motiv motivates you to have an aim? And these are some things that, that we've talked about in previous meetings um, of this series. And I'm curious to see if there's anything that you want to add to this. <clears throat> Pain can obviously motivate a request. Suffering, emotional suffering is what I mean by that. Compassion, love and action. I added that today because of what Gonsalvo said earlier. Practical considerations might motivate aims or requests and celebrations might motivate it. Anybody else got any, any other ideas about what motivates requests or aims? That's not on this list. Okay, well, maybe we finally found the bottom of this. And the first time I did this class, I only had one. I just had pain. And then, you know, as we continue to talk and connect, we came up with all these other beautiful motivations. 
All right. So why don't you take, um, say, five minutes and clarify your aims related to your certification journey. What are, what are, see if you can write down one or two aims for yourself for the next month. And I'll be quiet until, um, it's for seven minutes.
about one more minute. Okay, we have time for a leisurely checkout. And um, how about we just start with whoever would like to start first. Everybody has a minute or two to talk. I'd love to hear uh, um, if you came up with an aim that you're willing to share with us that you think is gonna support your certification journey. And it might inspire other uh, candidates here to to um, consider aims uh, for themselves. And also if you have um, any feedback that you'd like to offer me about this class. So whoever would like to start first, we'll start there and then you can call on somebody if you'd like. Okay, I'm up for starting. Okay. Um, it's just, just, I'm just checking in and checking out at the same time here and um, I'm really enjoying seeing people's faces and I regret that I got here too late to hear your voices and whatever breakouts there might have been. It's a juicy topic. And um, my aims reference my certification journey are um, oh, pretty much keep doing what I'm doing as I work with candidates and work with my mentor. Uh, I journal daily and I have uh, several uh, weekly uh, empathy buddies and a coaching call with my uh, co coaching slash empathy call with my mentor. I'm so just so enjoying seeing people here that I know, Lena and Joe and Susanna, we've met and I don't know if you remember when, but it was a long time ago, far, far away. And uh, there's some new faces here and I recognize names and faces and we've probably seen each other on some calls somewhere. And um, so I don't, I'm not, not getting present to any, any new aims. Um, it's really about um, oh, uh, uh, integrating uh, living in BC. Yeah. So uh, in relationship to my, my vision, which is to know and see God. Yeah. Continuous conscious contact with source. And so MVC is my chosen path for that reason, is to stay connected with the source energy in me and others. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Roger. Are you led to call on somebody that you'd love to hear from? Sure, Susanna. Yeah, I really enjoyed just uh, getting to know some of you more. This is a process today that's very, um, near and dear to my heart. I pulled out my journal. I've been working on something something similar since the first of the year. Uh, today's helped me hone in to my, much like Roger and Jim, really all of us that were choosing a particular path to uh, really bring out our meaning and purpose in the world. So I appreciate it. I got a whole page of you know, my mission, my vision, my aims. And um, much like Roger said, I ha I'm, have multiple ones and I'm at a s place in life of like simplifying them, simplifying some of the aims. So I appreciate uh, the space to do that and to get to know others on the path. And I will choose Lena. 
Thank you, Susanna. Mm -hmm. ah, yeah, I've, I've enjoyed the uh, intimacy of this call in a smaller group has um, really met my need for connection. And Jim, I, I so enjoy the time to write and then share and write and share the sequence, starting with the um, word of the year invitation. And uh, yeah, I've been the last few years doing with my students and alt another alternative of just instead of New Year's resolutions, just what are you, what feelings and needs are you wanting? Because whatever thing you want to have or place relationship or whatever it is, it's about the feeling you think you'll have or the need it will meet. And so we just go with those. And I like this variation and the word uh, feels like a touchstone. Yeah. And it was really lovely to hear everybody's words and uh, all the steps along the way. And um, my aim is to um, keep doing what I'm doing and um, pushing my growth edges, um, engaged in daily self-care and daily writing and reflection. Um, and um, I'm really clear that the more I am resourced and the more I can show up the way I want to in the world, and that's all about my self-care and reflection. And, um, and I'm really excited about growth. And I just started offering a practice group with tapping and, um, it was a little terrifying because I thought, well, who am I to, to do this um, tapping? I don't even know what I'm doing. <laughs> uh, it's been fun. It's been really well received. And, uh, and so my aim is, is to keep pushing in where I'm uncomfortable and um, try new things too. Growth. Yeah. And uh, Gonzalo, would you like to go next? You check out? Yes, I would. Thank you. Um, I'm feeling quite a bit of uh, warmth um, after being here with you. Um, I felt really welcomed, really, really welcomed by Jim and the whole group. So yeah, that feels really good and brings me yeah, satisfaction, happiness. So just wanted to say that. And I think my aim, uh, I focused on one very specific thing that I've been doing uh, with Christine, by the way, who's in the call, uh, which is a weekly role play uh, practice. It's so helpful, so helpful. I was going to say life changing, but I, I hesitated for a little bit, but it is, I think it is actually. So yeah, I really want to continue that. I think it helps me a lot in integrating NVC into my life, so. Uh, and I'm going to choose uh, Celia. Thank you. So I, I really enjoyed that winnowing process we did in the beginning, Jim, to get our one word for the year. You know, and it's always like, I, I love having that, that simplicity too, you know, that really has that thread that can align with my, my deepest values. And, um, and doing this, Doing this process, I found my aims were like, it was like popcorn. It was like, and this, and this, and this, and this, and I want to, and it was keeping doing a lot of things. And then there were all these other things like, I don't want to do this. So um, it's kind of hard for me to get my arms around the aims. <laughs> and I, you know, I, I have a lot that are already in play. A lot of things I'm doing currently. Um, what I do want to add is, not, I'm going to do this, and I know it's a negative, not spacing out and going to Roger's class on Wednesday night, I think it's for us, because um, last week I, I looked at my calendar and went, what happened to my, to my brain there? Um, 
And then I'm going to be doing my first uh, in-person IIT in Ireland, which I'm really excited about. Yeah, I'm just amazed it's actually happening. And um, I'm just looking forward to that as a real springboard for meeting people and and this pollination that we can do together. So um, I'm, I'm you know, doing my daily gratitudes, my journaling, I'm doing all my stuff, and then I'm, I'm looking to, to bigger connections. And I'm going to pick Joe. Thank you, Celia. Um, well, this meeting really met my needs for community and tribe and intimacy. And it's, it's just nice to hang out with you. Some of you I'm meeting for the first time. Uh, I apologize for being late. I hope that didn't inconvenience, inconvenience you or trouble you. Um, I think I did my merge with source sort of thing at the beginning with my word being non-dual. And um, so the aim, the aim, uh, I, I, but I loved how Roger opened. It's like, okay, well, what's left? Okay. Um, but um, my aim is to restart a weekly NBC training by March 17th. Um, I had a lovely run of eight weeks with Celia last year. And uh, I enjoyed it thoroughly and it took a lot of work. And um, I want to restart um, and step back into the vulnerable and do that. Yeah. So that's my aim. And Christina, would you like to share an aim and check out? Hi. Um, I'm, I'm grateful for being received here in the group. And at the same time, I'm still a bit afraid of speaking because it's not my language, my first language, and also because I arrived late. I would like to explain that I mixed the time. I thought it was at 9 p.m. here in Portugal, and uh, Gonzalo told me, no, it's not, it's at 7 p.m., so I came <laughs> in quickly. Um, I like to, uh, very much to think about my mission. And also, I like very much to, to think about the distinction between uh, requests and aims, uh, because it helps me to think more precisely. And um, I have uh, more than one aim, but uh, um, one of the, when the, the aim I thought uh, to share was that I, wa I want to start to study the key differentiations. And this, um, and uh, the, the, I think that uh, I feel that everybody is very connected and calm, and it makes me to feel more calm too. <laughs> and uh, thank you. Okay. Anybody want to add anything? <clears throat> Well, it's really been rich experience for me. It, um, I loved your feedback. Um, and if you have more feedback, my email address is uh, in the chat now. And uh, Christina, if you would like to me to uh, put you on my notification list, means you'll get about probably four, four emails a month reminding you of the things that I do uh, specific for candidates. Uh, you can uh, let me know and write to me about that. Um, I haven't totally, yeah, go ahead, Gonzalo. I'd love to be on that list too, if possible. Okay. I will add Thank you to you. the list. I've got your email address already. Uh -huh. And um, I haven't totally, I'm not totally clear on my aim for next month's pod meetings. Um, 
so if you have a specific suggestions that you think would support you, um, please write to me and let me know. My intuition is it has to do with uh, openness to feedback. And uh, so I, I think that's where we're gonna where we're gonna go. Uh, but I, I haven't I'm not, it's not totally solidified yet. I want to do that. But it's a, a part of the the matrix, uh, the pathways to liberation matrix that that um, it's been so supportive for me. It was a great measurement in my own growth to see uh, when I became curious about other people's disconnection. Then, then my NBC life just bloomed after that. I used to be afraid of that kind of feedback. And when uh, I saw some other trainers and friends modeling that, I got curious about being open to even that kind of feedback. And then things really shift, began to shift for me. And so that's, that's my inclination probably. The more I talk about it, the more, the more alive it comes in me. So that's probably what we'll do next month. And please, uh, uh, Christina and um, Gonzalo, let, let other colleagues in Europe know about this. I, I chose this time to support folks in Europe that I haven't had a chance to, to support yet. So please get the word out. And I look forward to seeing you all next month. Thank you for being here. Aloha, bye-bye. Joe, do you have a minute? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Oh, Jim. I said Joe. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah. oh. And.